Hi guys, Simon here. Uh, today I'm quite excited about this video because it's got a. I'm going to probably ramble a bit because I've not penned anything down for this one. Today I'm talking about a girl called Kirby um, and Lust. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you an update on Stefan and Joy and Nid. Hmm. This, this 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 video is about before I became bar manager um, on a couple of my holidays. I used to go and frequent that FLB bar down in Walking Street. And I found out today from a friend that Ben, who used to be the manager, actually went on to open Secret. I think it's Secret Go Go or Secrets Bar. He was a lovely guy, brilliant manager, absolutely lovely guy. Many a night getting drunk with him. This girl, Kirby, used to work in the FLB bar. Um, and then once she'd been taken with a customer, taken out bar fine, she she only ever went short time. She never went long time, so she only ever spent a few hours with customers. She would go out with the customer from that bar and then um, not go back to the bar. And she'd go and do a bit of freelance work. Well, when I, and, and I saw her quite a few times, and I never took her, um, out. It's a, that's a regret. There's one regret there. I think in life, uh, women maybe as well, but guys, you, you have these times in your life where you think, oh, I wonder what if. I wish I'd done that. And just that's one of my regrets. You'll, you'll understand why in a bit. So when I started the uh, as the bar manager uh, a few months down the line, Apple, my best girl. Um, it turns out that Kirby was. Apple's best friend, hmm. and that was, I, I thought, oh no. So, Apple would be in the bar, and then Kirby suddenly turned up the one day, I remember it well, and I thought, I know this girl. And you suddenly, you see a lot of girls from all the bars, they, they get bar fine and they bring the customers into your bar, so you get to see quite a few girls um, in your bar. And you, you hear these odd stories now and then of certain girls being good at something and bad and all the rest of it. Now I remember when I used to go in the FLB bar, quite a few of the guys, and I'm sure Ben told me, that Kirby was their best girl. Um, and there was lots of rumours about why she was so good and things. Um, but no, never took her. So she turned up at my bar the one night and I was like, oh I know this girl. And of course I made a beeline and started talking to her because I never dabbled with any of my girls from my bar um, but she wasn't working in my bar and I remember as soon as I went to talk to her Apple intervened and jumped physically just like straight to me what are you doing this is and then she introduced this is my best friend no her name's not really Kirby but you'll understand why think of American manufacturers of devices and she's like, this is my best friend, Kirby, um, and this is Simon, my boss, and like, oh, okay. And she just give me the, the stare, like, you know, you're not going anywhere near this girl. And then she told this girl, you're not going anywhere near my boss. Best mates, didn't want any problems in the bar. And she told me, yeah, you, no chance, don't. I'm like, oh God, okay. And this Kirby started coming in the bar every night. For, oh, and she became she just came in as a freelancer. Mama San said, "Yeah, no problem. Come on in. If you take a guy from the bar. We'll do a bar fine. You get a cut and lady drinks and all the rest of it." So she started coming in, and she teased me rotten for God. It must be six months. You know how some of these when you're in somewhere like Potato Hunt, a girls will tease you. She just tortured me for a good six months. Oh, I'll never forget her. She was stunning to look at, absolutely stunning. So, my customers, you know, when I started talking to them and saying, oh, that girl, I've heard things, they started taking her. That was a bad move by me telling them things because then they'd come back and, oh my God, the stories. I could probably do three or four vlogs on, on Kirby. All the different stories. But she only ever went short time. She's a very good businesswoman. She was quite blunt to the point with people. But she was um, 
one of these open-minded girls um, guys that wanted fantasies and things like that she was the girl um, without it's hard to say she she was apparently amazing at everything she was the queen of horizontal aerobics vertical aerobics upside down aerobics and she was an OSE specialist. That's Hammond, that's the little helicopter, I can hear it, the buzz. Git! Bugger off! She was OSE special. Now I can't tell you what the OSE means yet. You're going to have to wait. Another video coming out soon. She was amazing at all these things. And every one of my customers that came back, would, she would never go with a guy. This is another thing of her. She would never go with a guy twice. She, one short time, that was it, bang. And the guys would be foaming at the mouth, wanting to take, take her again, and it'd be like, no. And she told every one of them this. And their stories were coming in my bar day after day. These guys are just like amazing, you know, this is the dreams. And, uh, and it just wound me up more. It made me more lust. And I'm like, Oh, I've got to find it because I've got that one girl's been in touch with me. I've got to get hold of Apple, try and get hold of her, and find out what has happened to Kirby because there's no way she was ever going to settle and marry with a guy. I can see her actually settling with a woman, probably near Apple because they were so good friends. But yeah, this this girl, most stunning, beautiful girl, and um, athletic. But all the stories just escalated it and made it such it, it become she became famous in in the bar in some ways and her own bar as well um yeah very well known she she got herself a very good reputation in my bar anyway so i think i'm gonna try and do a few maybe a few videos because some of the things she was quite ruthless as well which reminds me of another freelancer that started coming in my bar who was very ruthless. God, I should have written some of these stories down about uh, Kirby. But after the bar closed at the end of the night, quite often, not quite often, uh, a couple of times a week, I would go out with the girls just to get away from the bar and have some food. And I remember the one night Kirby and Apple and a few other girls took me to the nightclub in Walking Street. I think it was called Simon's Nightclub, Simon's Disco, I thought Simon's, anyway. I remember them taking me in there one night and they, they sort of like protected me against any girl coming anywhere near me. It was, it was weird. They wouldn't let any woman near me. Um, very strange night, I'll always remember it. Yeah, it was as if they were vetting the girls. <laughs> you know, it was very weird. But a very good night. I remember we got, got quite drunk. So one day, I had this. How can I say it? I'd say he, the guy, was a big head. Was very cocky. Very sure of himself. Loads of money. Gold dripping off him. Complete idiot. I must admit. Um, didn't get many coming in the bar as customers, but this guy was a prize plonker. Uh, he had a friend with him who he sort of made out was his bodyguard. I don't know. But he came in for about four or five days on the trot, throwing money around. I didn't mind. Ring the bell, throw the money around. He wanted to be centre of attention. You've probably seen this sort of guy in a bar. He was an idiot, a complete idiot. Anyway, someone had obviously told him about Kirby and him walked Kirby this one day. And I was only a couple of metres away from this guy. And I thought, nah, he's not. He turned around to Kirby and he said, I'm going to, well, he told people around him he was going to buy her. He wanted a week in Samui with Kirby. And he started talking to her and offering numbers and she just walked away from him. And I, his face was like, you could see him getting angry. He just, he was the sort of guy who would think he could buy anything. But he did, he did buy her. It cost him an arm and a leg. Uh, in the exchange rates there, it's, I can't remember the numbers, but it was about 10 or 11,000 baht 
per day that he pays her in the end and the promise of clothes, everyday new clothes, and the promise of a gold necklace. Um, and she even negotiated it to a two bart necklace. I remember hearing it. That's about a thousand pound, twelve hundred dollars for a necklace, plus about eleven thousand baht a day. She was on for about three, four thousand dollars for a week. And she went, she went with him. She took him, they went out of the bar there and then. Um, and went away for a week. He came back to the bar. She appeared a few days later. She told him she'd gone back to her bar. And he came back in. And then we had all the stories. And yeah. Oh dear. Paid a fortune. Had the time of his life. Um, and he was a little bit sad. I think I was gloating a bit. I was like, you know, that'll teach you a lesson. You pick the best girl. You're not you're never going to find another girl like that. Uh, he was a little bit sad. He'd sort of come down to earth a bit. But I was like, oh, okay. He wasn't so sort of cocky. But she'd given him such an amazing time, apparently. It was another story. Everyone had an amazing time with her. Just made it worse for me. I just, it's like being a kid in a sweet shop and you've got boxing gloves on and you're told you can have all those free little sweets there but you can't pick them up. He's like, Rrr. Yeah, so she had him a good for money, well and truly. After I think maybe two times he came back and she walked in and she blanked him and was like, no, nope, not interested. And I, I, I can remember seeing his face drop. He wanted to buy her again, but he couldn't. It was like, you know, like, nah, you're tough, pal. <laughs> it was sort of, hmm, glad. And she stuck to her guns. He disappeared then, never saw him again. It was like, he lost face to his minder friend. Yeah. But then, people started talking in the bar. We had our regulars and they'd tell their friends. And we, I can remember people coming in asking, where's Kirby, is Kirby? And I'm like, Oh, I don't know if she's going to come. She was a freelancer. I wasn't going to send them down to Ben at FLB. <laughs> I'd be losing the customers. If I'd have said, oh, she works down there, everyone would have gone there and I'd have lost everyone. So I wasn't telling them. No way. Huh. But quite a few, oh, maybe six, seven months she's coming in. And I've got loads of stories from guys that took her. So I'm going to do Kirby again, I think, because there's quite a few little stories about her. But she was amazing. She was the ultimate and as a guy, he's in my back of my brain, I'm a happily married man. But just that little thing. I wonder what it would have been like if I'd have... Oh, oh yeah, so... Kirby, amazing. Hmm. I'll do more stories. So, Joy and Stefan update. Well, cutting it short, Stefan took Joy out of the bar permanently, paid the bar, couple of weeks money about 20,000 baht said goodbye and went off to Joy's village in Buriram somewhere where they Joy's mum had a few properties and Stefan rented one of her properties off her long term Joy was living with the folks Stefan and Joy weren't together they were just good mates and Joy introduced Stefan to a girl that used to well he saw her actually running past quite often she was um, called Nid, divorced, kicked one child. She used to be a speed, uh, a short distance runner. After having the baby, she couldn't run the speed, so she did long distance running. Very fit young lady, a couple of years younger than Joy. Um, and over time, Stefan and Nid got together. And last I heard, he was thinking of buying a property in that area. Um, and Joy's out of the bar scene, Stefan, I think, may be giving her some money and helping her with her business ideas. But all good, all friendly, all happy. I'm hoping to get an update. I'm waiting for an email, but just in case I don't, we'll leave it as a happy ending story. So maybe Stefan and Nid future marriage. There you go. Quick shout out for Titastic. I don't know if any of you saw this video. My face suddenly popped up on YouTube on a thumbnail and a video and I hadn't made the video. He did ask permission before. He did say, can I borrow something uh, from your channel? And I said, yes. I thought he was going to say the channel name or something. <laughs> and he got my image and uh, 
manipulated it. Very good video, except he he'd taken off my list basics of go go bar and did the video. I thought it was funny. Very good. Made my basic video look no good at all. <laughs> ah dear, funny. So yeah, titastic. Have a look if you haven't seen it. It's quite funny. I will catch you on the next video. Can't remember which one it is. I'm losing track now. All the numbers have gone right out the window. See you soon. Bye.